what is up my people my name is Anthony welcome back to September today I wanted to share with you guys in a quick tips video um, just a summary of a few things in one place that you can do to bring out and improve your mega scans plant assets um, generally I've used these quite a bit uh, and there are a handful of things which you generally need to remember to really change how these look in C4D um, octane specifically on this occasion um, but they can literally take your plants from something like this, which were like when they first imported, um, to brightening up and essentially creating a look more like this. So it's employing a little bit of translucency, um, a little bit of work in color space, and just some tips in terms of lighting that you need to remember, which can really bring out your assets. Um, I've been working on a handful of projects recently in terms of like scattering on landscapes, uh, and these techniques really, really work well um, to bring out those plants and create that extra sense of realism um, and it can be uh, a noticeable difference in, in your work. So without any further ado, uh, I'm going to quickly summarize. So I'm going to turn off the A and B comparison here and I'm just going to take out the models that I already have um, and just run over the setup that I've got here. So all I have are two cameras in a landscape, HDRI and a light, which is set up over here. I'm going to delete the light real quick. The HDRI, just a regular HDRI. Uh, and we're going to start from scratch to sort of like recreate the look so I have a chance to explain um, what each sort of step in the process is. But for now, uh, we'll just hover here. Uh, and you can sort of, this is the bit where you can sort of locate what asset you want. So in this case, I found this one. Um, something you need to bear in mind is that the assets vary a little bit on, um, on mega scans, right? So some of them are 4K, some of them are 8K. Some tend to have thicker leaves than others, uh, and the color spaces are a little a little jammed up. Obviously, you have some which are, some assets which are more like grass, some which are more like weeds. Um, so you sort of want to vary that in terms of like what you have. And what I mean by that is that, for example, a key principle is that um, a majority of plants have very slight subsurface scattering. What that means is that they're not entirely opaque, right? Light actually flows through them. And in a recent update to Megascans, there's actually a tab in the Octane material for translucency, which is great. Um, I'll follow up if you don't have that tab, there is another, another method you can use. But um, what I mean by that is that, for example, with weeds, there'll be less translucency than in like green leaved plants like these um, and the cat palms that I was using before. So that's kind of something you want to dial in or out, um, varying on your situation. Uh, obviously, there'll be less translucency in the stems rather than the petals. So just something to bear in mind. Um, but for now, we're going to follow up with the same plant that we had before, which was this cat palm. Um, if you can, obviously, it depends what kind of like level of detail you're going for. But for me, uh, I always have the highest resolution. So I'm picking 8K resolution here. My export settings are nothing special. Just sticking to Cinema 4D um, and then just hitting export. And by default, I will show you exactly what gets imported to Cinema 4D and how you can edit it. So that's going to get brought into our setup here super quick. Um, and any minute I can run over what we have. So it's imported it to the center of our scene here and we have some plants which by default look pretty dark but generally do fit into the environment, right? So what you need to do first is obviously if you're working with a scatter, you wanna make sure you're dragging these into the scatter. So let's grab what we've got here uh, and drag them in. We need to make sure we toggle this visible uh, and you'll see straight away by default if we look from far away, um, the original import is still sized up regardless of our scatter. So to change that, if we literally just drag and click down to turn off our original models like that, you'll see that it leaves the scatter and obviously turns off that original import, which is great. We can save up and we can hop into our whatever camera setup you have and you can kind of see the look you're going for. So without tweaking the HDRI and without adding a light, by default, this is what we get, um, incredibly dark, we're working ACES path tracing here. And by default, of course, we're not, delete the other material real quick. Uh, by the default, we're not working in ACES. You can tell if you click on albedo, head to color correction and then albedo here, you can see we're working in linear sRGB plus legacy gamma. So first step, you wanna switch that over to ACES or whatever color space you're working in. And already <clears throat> that's still brined it up. But what you'll notice is that specifically where the leaves sort of like under, under the foliage, um, it's incredibly dark, which if that's what you're after, works well, but typically with plants um, and scenes, you kind of want that brightened up and to ref refract the light a little more, right? 
So what we can do is before we head on into the materials any deeper, let's quickly add a light. So you can add sunlight if you like, but I prefer to just grab a little area light and then we can head in here and just rotate it ever so slightly so that we have it coming from the right, for example, just set that to 90. We can move that up and out the foliage, maybe somewhere over here. If you want a little more direction, you can just grab a target and make sure you're selecting your landscape. And what that will do is it will point that light to your landscape, no matter what the situation. So let's drag it out a little bit and almost simulate like a sun. That's what I mean by that is having a fairly small light, but maybe a little more intense than we'd normally have it. If you want to add some extra detail to your light, just head to texture here, C4 D octane, and just drop to fall off map here. Set this to vector 90 degrees. And you'll see that if we head into here, we'll start to have a little light coming off, although we need to brighten this up a little bit. So let's go about doing that. Set it to maybe a little more like 500. And you can see that light source starting to come through. Um, in essence, the further away you have that light, the more little shadows that you sort of see falling through your plant. So you sort of catch some here. Um, obviously varies on your plant detail and you can sort of move it about to, to gauge the look. But let's take a look here if we hop in here. We can even move this up or down and you'll see from this view because of our target, give us a pretty good opportunity to do that. So let's grab our light and let's make it a little warmer. So it almost simulates the sun like we kind of want it to, right? So we can have something a little more like this. We can make it almost like 1,500. It's really brightening up. You can start to see some nice shadows falling through there, which look pretty cool. Let's see. The higher we bring it up, the more it shines through. We're getting some nice, nice shadows there. And already that is creating some pretty, pretty differentiating results. But this is just lighting. Um, lighting is obviously completely, you know, if you've got a scene already set up, you don't want to change the lighting. So as an example, that's what you can do. But if we head back into the material, there's a few things that you need to bear in mind. So let's hop back in here. And you can see the material type here by default is set to universal. Now universal is a type of material which has transmission under it. So this is something you want to change. By default, obviously it imports. If you're importing an asset which isn't set to universal or for some reason doesn't have transmission, um, then that is something that you can recreate. You can see here, if we were to store the render buffer and enable the comparison I and mean, disconnect that transmission, you can see straight away, we get a much darker result. So that's something that you want to make sure you have activated. If you don't have that activated, what you can do is you can, so in this case, I'm just gonna quickly duplicate my material. What you wanna do is head in here and you wanna set this to glossy and then duplicate it one more time, set that material to diffuse uh, and ensure that in your glossy material, you have your specular turned all the way up. I set this to white for good measure. And then if you now create a mixed material, you can do that by heading to materials here, create mixed material. And then in that, just drag two materials that you just created. So one being glossy and one being diffuse. What's going to happen is, hold on, if I just make sure I'm doing the right one. Uh, yeah. So if you do that, what's going to happen is it's going to blend them by a float value of 0 0.5. We can double check that by going in here. I think this float texture is a little, little convoluted, but you see there's a float texture, which essentially means that it's blending both those materials by an opacity of 0 0.5. That's the only way of thinking about it. So if you have a diffuse material, which is obviously much darker, and then a glossy, glossy material, whereby you're getting reflections on the lighter bits, what's going to happen is if you imagine them overlaid, where the materials are the same and it's sort of just that albedo texture, it's going to have an opacity of one and where the light shines on it, which is exclusively on the glossy material, it's going to tone the opacity down in the diffuse and you're going to get a slight translucency. Um, it replicates what shines through on the default universal material, but that's just an example of something you can dial in if you didn't have that. But the final step or something that I typically do just to really get it going here, I've lost myself in the viewport is if you head to your active material. So if I just replace that mixed material to kind of show you, you can see we're getting a pretty similar look, but it's just something you need to bear in mind. We grab our original material, hop in here. Something you want to bear in mind is the BRDF model. Now by default, this is set to GGX. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this means, but what I do know is that when you set this to Octane, it actually has a bit of a difference in terms of its reaction to light. Um, I enable a comparison, but you can start to see the way it catches the shadows uh, and reflects the light in general seems a little glossier 
um, and more more realistic. It seems more more native. If that makes sense, um, just with the way the path tracing works. So if you've got your BRDF so model set to Octane and you've got your transmission activated, those are the two main things you can do, obviously, apart from working in the color space. And if you still wanted to either brighten or darken your texture, best way of you doing that is heading to your multiply tab or find out where your albedo is plugged into because more often than not, there's a color correction, which is literally plugged just, I think it's just down here. My node tree is very convoluted. But just here uh, and your gamma tab is essentially your friend in um, just color correcting your texture so if you want to move that down you can see that's going to make it much much brighter so this kind of varies on what kind of like i said what kind of plant you have that brightens up all the way but you see the tips have just kind of become frosted there or you can increase the gamma more and that's going to darken it down to maybe something more native to this kind of plant for example something a little darker um, and obviously the more you increase that the more that's going to bring up the multiply, the more it's going to sort of start to get some nice translucency shining below here. So you can see as we dial that in, you're starting to see shadows and little aspects which weren't even visible before, um, thanks to path tracing and some of that translucency. But in general, um, those are the main tips that you sort of want to bear in mind if you're importing um, assets. Assets in general, I feel like plants are very hit and miss um with mega scans for some reason i have some which seem to look great and others which seem to cause me issues um typically i have references that i work from and i try to like lo lo source as many as i can accurate to that um and sometimes i have luck and sometimes it becomes a problem so sort of sort of bear that in mind if you're having trouble with one plant just move on to the next and see if you can impl implement some of these techniques and make it look a little nicer um but in general that is the kind of approach that you want to have this is a great scene because of the way these um, the scatter is scaled. So if I want to add a little bit of depth of field, I can literally hop in here uh, and untick this, maybe set the aperture to something like five and just get some nice focus depth. Uh, and you can see it will start working with a lot of that translucency um, and creating a pretty nice, pretty nice look with depth. So without waffling anymore, those are a few of the main tips that you can sort of implement to um, straight away quickly improve your um, Megascans assets. So I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm hoping this helps. Um, and I'll see you with some more content very soon.